Ooh, that looks tasty. You and your adventuring companions are just returning to the bustling city of Greyport after your latest adventure. You are all looking forward to relaxing and spending some of your hard-earned loot at the Red Dragon Inn. The party will have to wait, though, because the city is under attack by evil monsters. Welcome, folks. Today, the Hungry Gamer is back, this time with a review of one of my very favorite deck-building games, Red Dragon Inn, The Battle for Greyport. Now, anyone who knows me knows that Red Dragon Inn proper is my favorite game of all time, which is strange because in general, I actually don't like take that card games all that much. But Red Dragon Inn has such an amazing theme and such an awesome sense of humor, and I love the art so much that I just adore it. And so when I got the opportunity a few years ago, by opportunity, I mean I had money and a store had a game, to purchase Battle for Greyport, I jumped on it as quickly as I could. Now, I don't know if this is my favorite deck builder, but it's really definitely up there. It is up there for me with Clank in Space and with Dungeon Alliance, though for my money, this is closer to just a deck builder than either of them. Now, I will also say that Battle for Greyport got a little bit of a bad rap when it came out, and it was a little bit deserved because the balance just wasn't quite there. And by that I mean, it was just really, really hard. I mean, the tutorial quest was really, really hard. But since then, they have gone back to the rules They've done some changes, done some errata, released an expansion, and part of that expansion they actually gave you a printed copy of the new rules, and they fixed the balance issues. And I just received Kickstarter pledge for the latest Red Dragon, which was the Smorgish Box. I got the Eco Edition because I didn't actually need the big box, which came with a new character for Battle for Greyport, and so I thought this is the perfect time for me to bust this out and finally do my video review, because I've done a written review quite a long time ago. Now, let me give you a quick rundown of what on earth you see in front of you. And so what you're seeing in front of you is the setup for the start of the game. And what I've chosen to do is I have chosen to do the Attack of the Hydra mission. So you'll see you get this card, just a nice little card there. And it tells you the story behind what's going on. And you'll see, Until today, most of the citizens of Greyport believe that the Hydra was a creature of myth and legend. They now know better. The mythical monster is attacking the city along with many other fantastical beasts. Can you defeat them and save the day? Well, let's hope. You see, I chose a medium encounter. And what this is here is this tells you what kind of enemies that you'll be facing. So you'll see you're facing beasts. And then later on, you're going to add dragons to your deck of enemies. And each game has three different encounters. And, it's, uh, and you'll see they have the name of the encounter, the location it takes place on, and I'll show you that in just a second. So the first encounter is Pest Control Duty. It takes place at the Market District. Wargs and rats and dragons, oh my! At the Grand Square. And then it'll run out of heads eventually at Enchantment Park. To win, you just have to defeat the Hydra. Not everything, just the Hydra. And you lose it any player gets reduced to zero hit points. So this is basically what you need to get set up. So I've done that. I'm going to move this out of the game for the moment. Then the next thing is you go and you find the individual encounter. So the first one is pest control duty, and it's taking place at the market district. And so what we have here is I'll give you the anatomy of this card, is this card is saying that you're only facing the beasts to start with. Each player gets two bronze coins and two silver coins, and you'll see how those work in a little bit, but those are used to build your deck. And then up here, I'm gonna block this off a little bit, is at the top, it's how many players are you playing with? How many characters? I'm currently playing with two, and I will say I do think two players is probably the hardest version of this game. I think at three and four, it's significantly easier, but I'm using my small table today, so I only have one, two characters. Then this here, this is how many hit points the location has. This is how many points of enemies the location starts with. And this here is how many points of enemies are in front of each player. Then once you've done that, 
you flip it over like so, and at the bottom it's just, if the location is destroyed, you add a monster from the dragon deck to the active monster group. And also, there is a bonus at this location where you get to see an extra item card, and I'll show you that in a minute. So the first thing that you do after doing that is you set up all the monsters. And so, from my monster deck here, I've drawn a card to be at the location, which is this giant cobra. And this giant cobra is two enemy points. It's supposed to be four, so I do need to draw another one. I made a mistake in my setup. And so I've drawn a second one, and I have drawn a warg. Two points, so I'm at my four, but it has an ambush ability. Ambush abilities take place immediately when the card is drawn. So add a warg token to this monster group. And so, what that basically means is I'm getting another tiny creature that's kind of joined this warg pack. And so, I go to the monster token stack here, and I find my warg. And there we have it. So I just basically have another warg. Because it can't just be one warg, there has to be many. Then as I go through, then you put, as I said, two monster points in front of each character. And the characters I'm using are Kronos, the Time Mage, and I'll ex you'll understand what this means later, but he rolls a yellow attack die, and each round you may re-roll a yellow or white die used in this fight, and you must keep the new result if you use Kronos to fight. And all the characters start with 10 hit points. And I'm using the new character, Roxana, the adventurous chef, and she also rolls a yellow die, and her ability is she can dual wield, meaning she can use two weapons at once if they're there. And then every time she levels up, you get to recruit a card from the reinforcements for free. And so in front of Kronos, I have a griffin, which is a ranged monster, so he goes back a little bit, and a giant boar. They're each one point monsters. And then over here, Roxana has a razor tooth beast in front of her, which is a two point monster. Now let's talk about the rest of the setup. I have over here my 10 hit points for each, I have their coins, and then up here I have my market. This is where you'll be getting cards to add to your deck. And there are characters that you can add who, as you're fighting your way through the town, kind of join you and come along. And so we have things like this, a Collegium Elder. And if I use him in combat, he has a yellow die, he costs a bronze coin, a copper coin, excuse me, and he has the ability to taunt, which I'll mention a little bit later. Also being a blue character, that means it is a magic character. And all being magic means, for the most part, is it tells you which kinds of items you can use. You can only use items that are blue if you're magic, red if you are a martial character. And then you'll see I have a red character there, and they all have different abilities. Then I have the item deck, which as I mentioned, Roxana can dual wield, so she can use two items at once. She is a red character, so she can use two red items at once. And here I have all the items that I can buy. As I mentioned, at the Market District, you actually start with one more face up. So I have this also face up, almost through my setup here. And then you'll see I have all these dice. These are the dice that you're going to use in combat. So there is a little bit of randomness to this game as you are using dice in your combat. Now, I have gone through and explained the setup. The next thing that you need to know is how each round works. And so the rounds are actually fairly simple. What happens first, and you'll see on the back of each character divider for the box, you have a nice little cheat sheet here. So during a round, so during a round, what's going to happen is there's going to be one character that is the active character. And what that means is they are the one that is going to take damage at the end of the round. At least them and the location will both take damage. And so every other player is going to get to play a single character, again, character, person, and a single item on that character, and they'll get to choose who they're attacking. And then, of course, the other thing is you see this big active player marker. It also gives you the ability to taunt. And so what that means is I can flip this over and I can taunt another monster. So I can say, hey, your mother was a poodle and your father was a chihuahua. And this razor tooth beast here would be so angry, it would come over here. So it's a little bit of a way to determine where damage is going to fall. You can also pull monsters from the market district and that's important. 
because you don't want the district to be destroyed. In fact, if you save the district by saving, you pull all the monsters away, you actually wind up getting a prize. In this case, this extra card being out is there the whole round. So each character plays one hero and one item, and I will just go ahead and do that very quickly. And so we're starting out with Kronos here. And so we're saying that Kronos is the active character. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to start out. So I'm going to choose to have Kronos here attack this boar. And so I'll turn him sideways to make sure I remember. And I'm going to use an item. I'm gonna use this chronometer. And you'll see it has a yellow die. So that means I get to add another yellow die to my attack. So Kronos here, and I'll just put that on there so I don't forget, is going to be rolling two yellow dice on his attack. And I'll tell you, of these three main colors, yellow is the worst, then white, then green being the best, and the black die is only used for certain items that came in the pirate expansion. And I've rolled a three. Not very good. If you remember, Kronos can re-roll a single white or yellow die used in the fight, and you must keep the new result. So in theory, you could wind up getting worse, though I am going to re-roll this one, because it can't get any worse than that. And that's much better. So now I have a five. So I will take a three damage, put it on the boar, and a single damage, and put it on the boar. Now I get to come over here, and I get to also use Roxana. But I don't have to use Roxana. I can use one of the people wandering about with her. And so as you see, I have these little lackeys coming along with me. Soldiers and acolytes. You see, they just do a single damage. They're not very good, though they can equip weapons. But this giant boar only needs one more damage. So I'm going to go ahead and use a soldier and do exactly one damage, and that will kill this boar. And that is everything that I can do, unless, of course, I want to use this taunt. And I'm not going to do that. I will use that with Roxana, and I'll show you why in just a minute. Then you move to the end of the round. First thing you do is you do monster damage. So first, active monsters deal damage. And remember, I said there's the active player. So that means, over here with my active player marker, the griffin is going to do one damage to Kronos. And so I take one of my hearts, and I put it to the side. Kronos is now down to nine health. Then, after that, location monsters deal damage. And the cobra here does one damage, the warg does one damage, and the warg that came with it does one damage. So my location actually just took three damage. That's actually a lot, and I put myself in a very bad position to start the game. Then, the next thing that happens is you do the cleanup. If there's any ability, sometimes they have this little broom on them, that means they're used right now, you do those, there are none, discard all played cards. That is this, the chronometer, and that is this, the soldier. Now, these will both get discarded into their player's discard pile. Then you discard any unused shield tokens, and then you do your recruiting. I will also say this is a time that I also reset my character card because I always forget. And by that I mean your actual character does not get discarded. It just is used and you cannot use him or her again until it comes back around to the end of your turn. So the next thing is you are allowed to recruit. And what that means is you are allowed to recruit a new character or a new item. And so what I think I will do is I'm going to spend one copper coin, and I'll toss that aside, and I'm going to recruit this Collegium Elder. And he'll get to use a yellow die, and he has the ability to taunt, and I will show you what that means in a minute. And I put that directly into my hand. Then, the active player, or the defending player as it's called, is allowed to discard any cards that they don't want, and so I'm going to discard these two generic guys here because they're not particularly useful to me. And then you refill back up to five cards. So I draw up, oh, look at that, another soldier, and another acolyte. So literally the exact same things I just threw away. Now's the time that I will point out that all of your starting decks are, like all deck builders, pretty crummy. They're filled with 
these one damage generic soldier or acolyte, or if it's coming out of the pirate expansion, a deckhand or ship mage, but they're all the same thing. And you'll have a single point damage red item and a single point damage blue item, and then something that is special to your character. In this case, Kronos has his chronometer. And then you take your round marker and you pass it to the left. So in this case, whoosh, all the way back around, and now it is Roxana's turn. And this is going to be the last turn that I'm going to show you. Oops, I forgot. I need to refill my characters there. And we have Terra the Navigator. Those of you that know Red Dragon Inn know that this is one of the main characters, and it's also a playable character in this game. If we had been playing with Terra right now, this card would simply be discarded and we'd put another one because you clearly can't have two of the same person. That's just silly. I mean, dragons and magic and a time-traveling dude, that's okay, but two of the same characters right out. We have to have some standards after all. And so what I'm going to do over here is I'm going to immediately start out and I'm going to use this taunt ability and show you what that means. So I'm going to turn this over and I'm going to pull this warg off of the town because I do want to possibly save the town location there. And so now there are, let me move these out of the way, two monsters in front of me. One's going to do two damage, one's going to do one. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use Roxana and I will turn her sideways. And I'm going to equip her with her special item, the cleaver, which just does two damage, but it gives her the ability to cleave. And that means she'll be able to hit a second monster for the same amount of damage. And so clearly I'm going to target those two. So I'm rolling a single yellow die and adding two to the roll. And I do want to quickly point out that Roxana did not draw a card at the end of the last round. You only draw cards back into your hand at the end of the turn in which you are the defending player. So Kronos will not draw anything at the end of this round. So what will happen is I get to roll my yellow die. Let's hope for a four, a three, add two. So each of these guys are going to take five damage, which is good for, them, for me because that means this warg has been defeated with its... 5 health, and I get to give 5 damage to the Razor Tooth Beast. So you'll notice that I started with one of Roxanne's characters this time, and I started with one of Kronos' last time. Now I didn't have to do that. I could have gone in any order I wanted, and often you'll want to do that because you want to make use of cards and their abilities to maybe add more characters sometimes, or what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna do a taunt. So I'm going to use this Collegium Elder to attack, again, the Razor Tooth Beast. And then, just because this is the last turn I'm doing right now, I'm gonna make sure I kill it, and I will play the Chronometer on it. Now you'll see that immediately upon use, I taunt. So I'm going to go ahead and just taunt on down this other warg. I mean, there's only one left on that location. And now I will do my attack of my two yellow dice. And I did six damage. I did not have to use the item, but that's okay. I have now done over eight damage, and the Razor Tooth Beast is dead. Now, and then we move into the end of the round. We do our cleanup. I do all damage to Roxanne. You'll notice there are no creatures in front of her, and I did go out of order there, I apologize. No creatures in front of her, no damage. Again, these don't do any damage. Now, I will also point out that let's just say that I had had on that last attack this. And I did my attack and I killed this warg, but I had taunted this griffin. So I would have pulled away the creature that was going to do damage to Roxana. So that's a little bit of how you have to play the game. You're really trying to manage where damage is coming. And of course, I do one damage up here. Then I go into, and as I always refresh now, I get to buy an item. So I'm going to go ahead and spend one copper and buy the Warhorn. Now the Warhorn adds one point of damage to my roll, allows me to immediately draw a card, and I get to add another hero. And so what that means is, if I played this on Roxana, great, I immediately would draw a card, 
hooray, and I get to add a hero. So I'm allowed to actually now play another hero. I could take this Acolyte I just played, also play it, and an item on it, because each hero can have an item, and suddenly you're building up the amount of damage you do. Again, as any regular deck builder, this is kind of how that works. And of course, I would refill and flip that over. This is how the game works, and you see how you manage your turn, you manage your deck, you have to make sure you're not blowing all your good cards, because then you will have nothing left when it gets back to you and you're actually taking damage. But let me kind of fast forward a little bit to what happens at the end of a round. What happens at the end of a round, once you have killed all the creatures, is you first spend the re after you do your regular cleanup, you spend the rest of your money because you can't carry money over to another round, but the game does not punish you for being really good and winning quickly. And then you move on to the next round. Because remember I said that there's three encounters. And so for this one, the next encounter is wargs and rats and dragons, oh my! And again, you see the setup, and you'll notice this dragon here. That means you're going to add the dragon deck into this beast deck. You'll take that, you'll shuffle it in, and dragons are a little bit harder, so now there's a variety of monsters you might be facing. And the game does this, in the second encounter, it ramps up the difficulty a little bit. Now, you'll also see that you get new money. You get a copper, two silver, and a gold. There are cards, the best cards in the game, clearly cost a gold, so they are out there. Then you go through that entire round. Then at the end of the next round, you move into the penultimate round. And in this case, it'll run out of heads eventually, and you do everything like normal. You put out your enchantment park, you get two silver, two gold. You can see the amount of monster points on the location, three, each person one. And this thing down here, this is how many hit points the boss has, because we have here our Hydra. So with two players, you only have to do 20 points of damage. Then you see the setup instruction, add the Hydra to the location, so this whole big card, and you put a little token on here that says 20, would go here, attacking the location, and you'll see for three points of damage each round, so a lot. But it also says down here that you add a Hydra head token to each player monster's group. And so, just like we did before with the warg, you go through your little monster token, and you find Hydra Heads. And you'll see each one will do two damage, has four health, it's immune to taunt, so you can't taunt it away, and it has tank. Tank means if it's in front of you, you have to attack it first. Now if you have something like Cleave, you can hit it and something else, but that is how that works. And then of course, you look at your Hydra, and you'll see that it has this ferocious ability, and all that means is, once you've pulled the Hydra away from the town, it will always travel with the round marker. So while you can taunt it away and maybe avoid damage, it will always be in the active player group to start the round. And then you'll notice when the Hydra takes damage, add a Hydra head token to the active monster group. So every single time you hurt the Hydra, you're adding another head out there. During the monster damage step, if the Hydra did not take damage that round, each Hydra head deals damage to the player it is in front of, not just the active one. So it's kind of adding an urgency and a choice. You have to hit the Hydra, and if you do, well, you're getting another head in the active player group, but if you don't hit the Hydra, everybody's taking damage. And I'll also point out that this here is armor. It means every attack that you do on the Hydra, you take two away, unless you have an ability that bypasses that. And as I said at the beginning, you are playing on and on and on until the Hydra is dead. Unlike the other rounds, you don't have to kill all the stuff out there. You can just kill the Hydra and be done. Now, the only other thing that I will add is in between each round is when you heal. Now, the original version of the game did not have any healing in it whatsoever. That was one of the things that made it so hard. And some people really liked that. Other people were very frustrated because they just couldn't win. So in the updated version of the rules, it's in between encounters you're able to heal. And you get to choose at the beginning of the game how much healing you're going to do. I usually do two points of healing per round, but you can say heal back to full if you want an easier game. You can say just one, three, five, whatever you want. 
but you're just supposed to determine before the game as you're kind of setting the, the difficulty level. And that's it. That's how this game works. And that was a little bit of an elaborate explanation. There are certainly plenty of abilities that I did not talk about. And then the last thing that I'll mention is, and I also forgot to mention this earlier, in between each encounter, your character will level up. And all that means is you take your big card and you flip to the one that says level two. So Roxana here, she now has a white die, but if you were paying attention at the beginning, you'll see when you level up, you may recruit a card from the reinforcements for free. So she levels up, hooray, and then she gets to go up here and pick anything she wants. And so we'll just say, we'll just grab that assassin real quick. So now she has this silver coin for free, and that goes into her deck. Excuse me, into her hand. So she actually starts with one extra card. And so that's it. That's how this game works. You go back and forth, around and around, and hopefully you save the town of Greyport. And then, I suppose if you really wanted to, after you finish this, then you can go ahead and pull out your game of Red Dragon Inn, and all these characters exist there, so then you can actually finally go and have your drink. That sounds like a great day to me, just a day of Greyport, Red Dragon Inn, new characters, Greyport, Red Dragon Inn. But then again, I may have a problem when it comes to Red Dragon Inn. So, let's talk about what do I like about this game. Now, as I said at the beginning, this game is my favorite, or if not my favorite, one of my top few deck builders in my collection, so clearly I have a lot to say that I like about it. First off, I absolutely love the Red Dragon world. I love the characters. I love the art. I love being able to actually adventure with these characters. I like playing within Red Dragon, and I like the art. I think it's well done. I think it's evocative. It's fun to look at. And if you've played Red Dragon Inn, the character art is very suggestive of who that character seems like they actually are. Even down to, as you go through here, some of the characters that you can play. I mean, if you've played Gurky, you know he's sneaky, and that, that really brings that out. You know, you have Zot here, you have Eve, your illusionist, Got your bosun, a pookie, pretty much everyone's favorite. And again, it's just delightful, delightful art. I really love the art in this game. I think the gameplay overall feels pretty unique to me. Now the game's a few years old and there's other games that do this. But this is, in my opinion, the best implementation of this monsters in front of each different character and you're dealing with that group trying to protect the one character while trying to save this location and it's just really well done and i also love that it has a really good balance of benefit and punishment for not saving or saving the location sometimes you get to recruit a card for free sometimes you get extra options to recruit for free but if you lose it, sometimes extra monsters get added. Uh, monsters heal. You never know. So you really got to make sure you don't let that get destroyed. And it's really easy to pull things away. But of course, if you pull too many things away, you're going to get your butt kicked over here. So it's a real balancing act. I really like the way the recruitment goes. I like that you know what is coming. You know what is out there. You know what kind of money you have. And you can make your choice based on how you feel the game is going what has come out. I like that. I think it's well done. I think there's a very good variety of player characters that you can use. They all have unique abilities. Um, I think that you never feel like, oh, if I'm playing this one, I'm at a disadvantage. All of them have their good points and they have their weak points. I like the item ability. I like how you're able to kind of customize your adventurers as they're going through this town, fighting things and picking up loot, finding stuff that's out there and then using it or passing it off to someone who's they found somewhere else on town they're coming along with them to try to save the town. I think all of the bosses are very unique. They are, are probably more that are hard than are easy. So there is that in there. But as I said, with the healing rules, you can make the game a little easier or a little harder. So as you can tell, all in all, I really enjoy this game. Now let's talk about the minor misses that are out there. Well, I've already talked about the first one, which is... It is really a hard game, and some of the hard bosses in the few years I've had this game, I've still never beaten them. It just can be really hard, very unforgiving. 
And I'll also say there is only one thing in this game that misses the mark for me thematically. And even though I like the mechanics of the recruiting with the coins and knowing what you can get, it doesn't fully make sense to me. And it doesn't make sense to me because who is stopping to sell me something in the middle of this fight. So here we have this gigantic Hydra sending beasts and dragons into town to destroy stuff. And here we are, we're doing our greatest, we're using all of our ability, we're getting townsfolk to come help us fight, and we're struggling tooth and nail. And then here comes Fritz the vendor, who's like, oh yeah, I got some stuff that could help save the town, but you gotta pay me for it. So that kind of is a little bit odd, though, that said, I say it like that, it is kind of funny, kind of silly, so maybe that does fit right within the world. But it does, it's always struck me as a little bit odd thematically. And the only other thing that I will say that I think is a little bit of a miss about this game is there's just not a ton of support for it. Now I say support, I don't mean that Slugfest games will not send you something if something's destroyed or lost or damaged. In fact, quite the opposite. When I first got this game, we happened to be on a trip and my wife had some meeting in the hotel. So while I was waiting an hour or so for her, I played a game, my very first game. I set it up, I played, I packed it up, we came home, and I realized I'd left a bunch of the location cards there. I'd literally had the game for 12 hours and I lost some cards. So very distraught, I got in touch with Slugfest and I said, I've lost these cards. Can I buy them, please? You know, I just got it. And they sent, they just sent them out to me, didn't even let me pay for postage, and they even included some promo cards. And then, me being the stupid human being that I am, I then realized, nope, I had actually left more than I thought. And I got to email them again and say, can you also send me the others? I will really pay for the postage this time. I'm so sorry. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And again, they just sent them on out and didn't say anything about it one way or the other. They just did it. So it's not that there's not support there, it's that this game is an underrated game. It doesn't get enough play, in my opinion. And so, yes, they have put out an expansion, and yes, I did just, as I said, get this new character, which they released as part of the last Kickstarter, which I got this character for both Red Dragon and, and Battle for Greatport. But that's it. There's not going to be a ton of new content, though there is certainly plenty of content out here for it. And so that's really all I have to say about it. I really don't have anything bad to say about this game. And it's just really well done. Very on target thematically. Very on target with the world of Red Dragon Inn. The art captures the same vibe as Red Dragon Inn. Except they're a little more serious because uh, we're not drinking right now, we're fighting. I think if you are a person that likes deck builders and is looking for, for another one that's not quite the same, that's a little bit different, this is a great game for you. If you enjoy fantasy games, this is a good game for you. If you like Red Dragon Inn, this is a must have. It's just that well done. I really enjoy it. And I'll also say, you can get it fairly inexpensively right now. So even if you're not sure, take a flyer on this game. So there you have it, folks. That is Red Dragon Inn Battle for Greyport, one of my very favorite deck building games. As always, if I made a mistake in the playthrough, let me know. I will put it in the Klingon subtitles. If there's something you would like me to work on in the future for the videos, please leave it in the comments. I will certainly try to do that in the future. There is one week left on the Hungry Gamer game giveaway. I'm going to wrap that up in just about a week, but you still have time to go to that video, give it a watch, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and make a comment on what game you are most interested in winning and you are automatically entered to win one of those many, many games. I will be shipping it within the continental United States at my cost. It doesn't mean if you live outside the continental United States that you cannot win, but we'll just have to do a little discussion about the cost of the shipping. I will certainly split it with you in some way. As always, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, go ahead and subscribe. I have a bunch more previews, reviews, unboxings coming up the rest of the summer. As always, thank you so very much for watching. Have a wonderful, wonderful day.